Hey, it's Anna. Welcome back to Mirror Mirror. And if you're new here, hi. I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film three videos a week here on my YouTube. And this series is all about relationships because they are the key to life. And for this video, this is something that has been requested. I've had DMs asking for my advice so many times throughout the last two years on healing through heartbreak, what to do when you feel heartbroken, how to move through it, how to heal, how to love yourself and take care of yourself. So this video is long overdue. Literally yesterday I had somebody DM me asking about it. So I figured, you know what? We're just gonna film this video and actually help the people. So what to do with heartbreak? So many of us, I swear, probably the majority of us experience heartbreak at one point in our lives or another and it doesn't even just have to be romantic relationships it can also be with friendships it could be with family it's kind of similar when you lose someone through death as well like it's when i mean your heart breaks it's like when you don't know what to do with yourself literally like somebody leaves your life and you have to kind of pick up the pieces and figure out what to do with yourself and how to move forward. So I can only speak on my experience and from my experience, the best number one thing to do is to take care of yourself. And I know that that one is very, very obvious, but it's something that we, we neglect when we're hurting, like you want to spend forever in bed, not eat, not move, or you want to overeat, like Everyone handles it differently, but for the most part, a lot of us just stop taking care of ourselves because we literally don't know how to function, you know? Like, when you're heartbroken, not only are you dealing with whatever the situation was, like, whatever the pain that's there, maybe there was cheating, maybe, like, maybe they just didn't want to be with you anymore, you know? Like, whatever that pain is and that circumstance is, you're healing from that and having to face that but then you're also having to face the fact that they're not in your life anymore so it's like double whammy of pain to be honest so there's a lot of healing to take place a lot of self-awareness and a lot of being with yourself and I mean that's kind of the process of self-love anyway on on its own kind of thing but when you're dealing with heartbreak it's essential essential to not go and get in another relationship to not start talking to other people to not try and mask your feelings and hide them and coat them with distractions but to literally go and sit in your room and feel the feels <laughs> go and sit in your room and cry if you need to go and sit in your room and punch the pillow if you need to Go and sit in your room and binge watch a TV show and just cry to that TV show if you need to. Eat a full tub of ice cream if you need to. Like, do what you need to do to let those emotions come out. Because the worst thing you can do is act like nothing's wrong, nothing happened, and just try and go about your life distracting yourself. Because you're going to hit a point where you literally explode and have a meltdown and... It all just comes out at once and you won't know how to handle that. So allow yourself to feel all the feels and go and cry it out because it's okay to be upset, you know. It's okay to grieve the fact that they're no longer going to be in your life and the fact that you're now separating, the fact that it didn't work out. Like there can be a lot of shame and disappointment in the fact that it didn't work out, especially if your family are really close to the person and stuff or you're really close to their family. You're not just leaving that one person, you're leaving the whole family, you're leaving everything and that can be so, so painful and so difficult to acknowledge and accept. So it's really important to go take care of yourself and acknowledge the fact that this hurts, acknowledge the fact that this is sad and that either you don't want it to happen or like you're gutted that it has to happen, whatever the reason may be, but just go and take care of yourself. Make sure you feel it, make sure you acknowledge it because once you become aware of it, it will start to ease. Gradually, it will start to ease day by day and it will get better. But if you don't face it, then you're not gonna be able to move on with your life. You're not gonna be able to pick yourself back up. You're just gonna stay stuck there.
there. So need, 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 need to acknowledge how you feel. And it's okay to feel however you feel, no matter what that emotion is. It's perfectly valid, perfectly okay to feel it. And you need to acknowledge it to yourself. You know, you don't even have to tell anybody else how you feel. You just need to acknowledge it to yourself and let yourself express that in whatever way that you need, whether that's journaling, crying, having a bath, like however you need to express that emotion to yourself maybe it's just talking to yourself in your head maybe it's talking to yourself out loud whatever you need just go do that go find a like quiet place on your own go sit in a park somewhere and just do that by yourself let yourself feel it all and then once you've done that like it may take a few times of doing that and even when you start healing and you're like getting up and you're ready to go again, you may find yourself back there like a week later or something. That's okay. It's just part of the process because nothing is um, like it's healing is not linear. It's not like a straight line where there's one step, one step and you just keep moving forward. Like sometimes you come back around to things that you've already done, like painful wounds that you've already felt. You're still moving forward, but it, it goes in a spiral in a circle rather than a straight line. So it's okay to come back to feeling sad again later on. Like that's completely normal, completely fine. Some of us get upset over things that happened like 10 years ago, you know, like it's completely fine and okay to happen. So once you start to acknowledge your emotions and let yourself feel all of the feels, then you can slowly start to shift your focus to all of the things that you want in your life. Like reevaluate, who do I want to be? Like, what kind of person do I want to be? What's my dream, ideal vision for myself? What's my ideal life? What's my ideal goals? What are my passions? Like, reevaluate your whole life because you're just going to brainstorm and, like, find your feet again, you know? When we're in pain, we're not really very grounded. We're caught up in our emotions and we're caught up in our heads. So to reevaluate your purpose and your goals and who you are will help ground you back into your body, back into your experience, back into just everything that you want and readjust your focus. And you can even do this right at the beginning. Like you don't have to wait. Like I said, it's not linear. It's cycle. It's cyclical. I couldn't even think of the word. It's a cycle. So evaluate everything that you want you could journal it you could write it down like you could type it on the computer write it on your phone whatever works best for you but just brainstorm everything that you want write down your ideal qualities in the relationship like what does the person need to have what do you need to have what what's your vision for your life and get really clear on those things because that's what's going to keep you going not just in relationships but life in general like these are the kind of um things that help to combat overthinking and depression and, and anxiety and stuff. When we have a vision, we have a plan, it stops self-doubt, you know, when you're trying to achieve your goals as well as relationships. So just get really clear on all of these things. And it doesn't matter if you don't know the full answers straight away, because the answers will come to you as you move on in your life and as you um, go through more experiences and stuff, more ideas will come to you. But just in the present moment right now, write down all of the things that you want. Envision how you want your life to be and just write down all of those things. All the things that excite you, all of the things that you love and really want to experience more of. And then, um, what else could you do? I just think that that will really help get you out of the funk and out of the sadness. Like for me, when I have gone through heartbreak myself, I will be crying and I will be a mess for a few days and I will let myself just be that mess because, you know, I'm not sorry for it. It's sad. So you just let yourself experience that mess kind of brokenness and then I will start... Um, I'll go to my journal and I'll go to all of my goals that I already have listed out before because it's something that I do on a regular basis, even if I'm in a relationship, even if I'm not. Like, it's something I do all the time anyway. So I'll just go to my goals and be like, okay, like, you don't need anybody else in your life to achieve what you want to achieve, including your purpose, you know? Like, no matter who's around you, even family, you don't need them in order to achieve it. It's good to have them, it's good to have incredible relationships, but you don't need those specific people to be able to live your life how you want to live it. So once we detach from the idea that we need 
to have that exact person and we let go of that and we realise that what's meant for you will come to you, what's meant for you can never miss you, it will always, always reach you, then you're not attached to specific people, you just know and trust that the right people will always be there, you know, so yeah, just brainstorm out your goals and I will do that and I'll go back to my goals and readjust and then I'll remember like, okay, even though I've lost this person, I still have me, I still have my goals, I still have my purpose, I still have everything that I could possibly want, like I have it listed out, I know exactly what it is, I know where I'm headed, I know where I'm striving for and it just helps kind of boost me back up to take action on those goals and get back to work on those goals and if like one day I need to cry again I'll just go and take a day off and go do that you know and then I'll get back on it again and it's just a cycle of getting up falling back down getting up falling back down and eventually before you know it it's been a month and you've not fallen back down at all because you've been taking care of yourself you've been allowing yourselves to go meditate have baths like go out with friends you know you've been allowing yourself to do all of these things on a daily basis anyway so you're not really falling down as low because you get the rest and recharge in the mornings and in the evenings and whenever else you need it really it doesn't have to be a set specific time but yeah so oh, it's just self-care honestly and the more that you do this as well like the more that you um the more time you spend with yourself on figuring out who you are who you want to be your goals and all that kind of stuff the more you'll get to know yourself the more you'll get to know what your standard is like what you will and won't accept what you want what you like like you'll literally get to know everything about the life that you want and the people that you want in it like the types of people that you want in it and that is what's going to attract those people knowing those things is literally the first step to bringing those types of people and situations and experiences into your life so you need to get clear on it otherwise how are you going to know what you're attracting and why and how and all of that kind of stuff you know so those are my tips on how to heal but another thing I will say is to take the lesson from the relationship because you experienced that relationship for a reason it has ended for a reason and there is always always a benefit and a blessing that you can take from every experience you know like it's not a waste of time it taught you something it taught you something about yourself so when you understand what it's teaching you maybe it's teaching you that you should no longer settle and that you need to assert your boundaries maybe it's teaching you that you need to communicate more and speak up more maybe it's teaching you that um that you've been going for the wrong types of people or something like or maybe it's teaching you that you need to let your guard down more and be a little bit more vulnerable you know like there could be a million different lessons and things that it's showing you about yourself that you want to change and elevate so definitely look at the relationship look at the dynamics look at the reason why it ended and see which parts of yourself you can improve because oftentimes we're very aware of the parts that other people need to improve like if a guy cheats on you then you already know instantly that he needs to do better and he needs to figure himself out but when it comes to ourselves we don't really know the areas that we need to do better the areas that we want to do better not because we're bad people not because the other person is a bad person but because we're just all learning and trying to grow and trying to take the lesson from each experience to make ourselves better people you know so once you find that lesson that will also be really helpful because then you can start doing the work to improve that part of yourself and yeah just become a better person that you actually want to be and when you've written down your list of all of the qualities that you want to have you'll know which one based on that lesson which one it is that you also want to improve comparing the lesson and your list as well so yeah, it's just a lot of self-love to be honest and self-love can be a million different things, it's different for everyone but one of the things I love to do is have a bath because I just love being in water, I feel like that's such a Pisces thing but I just love, love, love water and it helps me to calm my entire nervous system, my entire body and really listen to my intuition and I also love making music like that's that's therapeutic for me so you need to think about what things you enjoy what things you love going for walks like all of these different kind of things that you would class as self-care because it's something that brings you joy self-care is something that brings you joy it doesn't matter what it is if it brings you joy 
go do it. As long as it's not hurting anyone else. <laughs> but go do it because that is self-care, you know. You're trying to just take care of yourself, boost yourself up. So I hope this video was helpful. Please take care of yourself. Please, please, please go look after yourself. Eat well, exercise, you know, nourish your mind as well. Make sure you're careful with what you're consuming and what you're browsing through social media and stuff. All of these have an impact on our health. And when you're already dealing with pain and heartache, if you then go like making poor decisions on your health, it's just gonna make things a million times worse. So make sure that you look after yourself, you feel all the feels, and then you readjust your focus to everything that you want and trust that the right person will come when it's time, but only when it's time, okay? We can't rush these things. So thank you so much for listening and watching. I really hope this helped, and I will elaborate further if you have anything else that you want me to touch on in this topic or any other area of life as well. Definitely DM me or comment below, and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already because I do upload three times a week, and check out the description box for all links to my social media, my music, my merch, my jewellery brand, and so, so much more. So yes, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, yeah, I think he like me. Yeah, I'm icy, cooling in that white tea. Oh, yeah, I think he like me. Yeah, I'm icy, cooling in that white tea. Oh, yeah, I think he might. I'm the thing he like in my range, all white. Oh, yeah, I think he might. I'm the thing he like in my range, all white.